I want to have a very quick fire round with each of you to ask you what you want to see in Sri Lanka uh, to, in 2030, which is just six years. Uh, you know, we, we are almost there, but uh, since we've been talking about 2030, Jayanta has been mentioning it, I want to ask each and every one of you what you hope to see in Sri Lanka in terms of uh, the triple planetary crisis, in terms of conservation, in terms of mitigating these challenges. Uh, Shanis, can we start with you? Sure, Rangi. So um, I think it's economic prosperity that is founded on conservation and uh, collaboration between stakeholders. I think those are the three angles, because if you take that formula together, um, then we will have success. Um, adding to that, I, uh, in terms of collaboration, I think it's very important that we have all the data that we have stored, you know, like Rohani was saying. The data we have, I think it's time to share, it's time to analyze. And then with that comes responsible reporting and transparency. Um, I believe if we can get that in order, because what gets measured gets improved and gets done. Yeah? So that's it from me, Rocky. Thank you, Shanice, for that. So what gets measured gets done. Thank you very much. Palind, if I ask you. So uh, sorry if I made you scared of things which I told you earlier. Uh, I was scared. That's what I said. Uh, last month, we were in India, Ahmedabad. The temperature was, trust me, it was 39 degrees Celsius. I hardly could stand. Because of that, I know by maybe five, six years, we'll be there. Like, I literally didn't want to breathe because it, it made you a feeling like the warmth is there, like you get the heat wave, that's, that's, that's completely there. But when you breathe in, your nostrils, inside the nostrils, getting that tingling feel, sensation, like when you open an oven. So that's what you really felt when I was in India. And it was shocking. You don't feel like breathing or going out of the AC, which is unfortunate. But what if you experience that in Sri Lanka in time to come? So I want all the members, not just corporates, not just scientists, the general public to think about it and then do something. Uh, it's good to collaborate, uh, as I always tell to my management, it's collaboration is the next best way to do activities. Uh, Like-minded collaborations, uh, uh, joint ventures are always good. Uh, and also restoration, uh, you need to talk about terrestrial land and marine ecosystems. Uh, we work with uh, some of the organizations, not for profit organizations like Clean Ocean Force, who's uh, on a daily basis, they are taking down trash from the beaches of uh, Sri Lanka, Western and Northern Province. And uh, uh, you have Earth Lanka, uh, Young Biologist. Uh, you have so much of Jayanta is also uh, a good collaborator which if you uh, want to do restoration initiatives. There are so much of things which you do with the positive collaboratives. Uh, I'm not talking about the activist. I am keeping the boards out of this so total system. Uh, if you study, if you know something, just do something uh, better. In return, you will learn something. If it is bad, report that as well. Uh, I'm not saying just to report your best practices. If you started to do a restoration initiative and then it failed, report the failures because someone else will not be doing the same mistake which you did. So reporting everything, literally everything, is good. And uh, uh, renewable energy, uh, ventures, uh, uh, taking part in this kind of things, brainstorming, telling your idea and what you are doing is also good. Uh, really appreciative of the MD initiative of uh, getting us as well. So, uh, as I wanted to say, you need to be afraid before it's too late for you. So, that's my closing remarks. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. Rohan, what are your thoughts on 2030? If I look at 2030, 2030 is a very important year at global level because SDGs are coming to an end. Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction targets are coming to an end in 2030. Uh, new urban agenda, the NUA 2030 is coming to an end in 2030. So, and also most of the, uh, the climate agreements are coming to an end and also they are trying to take a uh, review on 2030. So 2030 is a, is a important year. Even for Sri Lanka, 
that uh, the recent uh, climate prosperity plan is also fo focusing on 2030 plus beyond. Uh, I remember by uh, it says by 2030 we need to raise 26.5 billion US dollars to address the climate change issues plus other investment activities in the country. It is a huge amount of money. So my focus is always about the investment on climate change and also how are we going to invest on climate change that we need to develop a bankable as well as investable projects. So that is something that I want to look at it and also we need to tap all the available financial facilities, instruments uh, to support our financial environment, the economy because if the economy is uh, resilient, I believe that we may able to build up our own resilience to climate change. Without looking at the economic issues, we may not be able to achieve the climate change. So first thing is first thing. So we need to identify our priorities first. Our priorities are mixed up at this moment, so we need to look at the priorities. So what are we going to are we look? Because at the moment we are looking at economic crisis, we are trying, we are slowly recovering from the crisis, but that does not mean that we are, we are not uh, forgetting all the international and global commitments that as a government or as a, as, a, as a country that we have pledged. So we need to look at all these aspects. So, so in order to achieve these uh, 2030 targets or, or what we call it 2030 ambitious plans, we need to develop solution based on policies. Policies which are backed by evidence, data and information. And the second one is, once you have a policy, you need to develop actionable facilities or it can be infrastructure, it can be software, it can be humanware development. So that needs to be identified. The third one is, we should not forget the environment. We need to identify all our solutions are embedded or incorporate into nature based solutions. Our approaches should, should be eco based. So that has to be looked at. And the third, the fourth and final one is I always say in order to do all these things, you need to access the climate finance. So, where do we have climate finance opportunities? Yeah, we, you can go for. You, you have to develop your own uh, frameworks to access the, the climate bonds, sustainability bonds, green bonds or blue bonds. And in the same time you need to look at the, the uh, debt for nature swaps as well as debt for climate swaps. And also you need to look at not only the, the, the loan and the credit part but also you need to tap the available uh, funding facilities like Green Climate Fund adaptation fund and also the, the, the three big uh, financial uh, partners. But in the same time we need to understand we should focus more on adaptation than mitigation approaches because Sri Lanka is a negligible contributor at global level in carbon emission. Therefore we, we are the victims of climate change. We are a nation of victims of climate change. So therefore we need to focus more on our adaptation practices. But these adaptation practices should not be maladaptation practices. These pra adaptation practices should be based on evidence and it has to be planned and it has to be implemented. So that's my conclusion and that's where we need to go and that's what we are trying to do. So let's work together with, uh, with, with the corporate sector, the non-government sector, and the financial sector as well as the government sector. So we need to have this, all these pillars of development, development to achieve the climate targets. Thank you. Thank you, Rohan. Jayanti, you have the final say of the day. Uh, by 2030, what I would like to see, number one, is that nothing but uh, a country that where in which where the power, energy, and transportation sector which is a contributor roughly, contributes roughly around 60 to 70 percent for emissions. This is a very important number. Energy and transportation alone contributes 
almost 70 percent of our total emissions. So you look at agriculture, you look at uh, industry, you look at other things, it's kind of negligible in a way. I'm not saying negligible, anything is not negligible, but uh, it's energy and transportation. So by 2030, if you have a country that um, are not dependent on fossil fuel, I'm not saying completely yeah. <laughs> it can be zero in terms of fossil fuel, but uh, very minimal and that is a country that I would like to see because that would mean walk the talk. And that would mean that it's not only the government, but the companies are also. The companies that are probably using uh, energy from coal power plants moving into their own energy. Companies having, you know, all these em high emission vehicle fleets moving into uh, probably electric vehicles charged with their own electricity produced. And uh, companies, uh, you know, being more innovative in terms of their logistics and their movement. And this is this is same for the government. That is for public transportation, energy pro prov provision of energy to the companies. Uh, that's one thing that I see. Number two, of course, seeing leaders, politicians, and the uh, bureaucrats being honestly uh, honest about uh, achieving. Um, uh, real carbon neutrality or if not in, you know, trying to cut emissions and trying to achieve the targets and uh, conventions that we have signed up, CBD, Convention on Biodiversity, achieving those targets. Where one other thing that I would really, really like to see by 2030 is that we gain that 20 plus percent of a marine area that we have demanded at UN and that would mean that we'll have a massive marine area and as for CBD, we need to declare at least 10% of our marine area as protected areas, or 5%. Uh, I, I may be wrong in terms of the percentage, but a, si a reasonable percentage. Right now, we only have 0.07% of a marine protected area. So most of it is for available for exploitation, oil spilling, extraction, plastic pollution and uh, bottom trolling that and this it's it's the marine ecosystem is far more important than the terrestrial ecosystem and that we don't give enough promi enough prominence as corporates also as government also because why we don't see it every single day like your backyard so a country that truly understands these things and finally citizens can be carbon neutral also. We can get our certification as carbon neutral citizens also. Citizens who are conscious of their own things, like most of you mentioned, their back, we are, our backyard, our plastic consumption, our energy consumption, our water consumption, our pollution, what are we polluting, our chemical usage at our, at our bathrooms, the cosmetics we are using, the sanitary uh, or other uh, bathroom uh, chemicals that we are using, or probably for washing what we are using, where they are ending up. And all of that need to be looked at and our, and our uh, area, the household, the, the land, the home garden that we are living in it. We are concrete in the whole, whole thing now. Our lands are interlocked with cement now. And what happens is that we completely block the groundwater charging process and we extract all the water and it creates a huge impact. If you know the uh, uh, impact of groundwater, depletion of groundwater table, is, this can be disastrous. So. What I would, once again, if I may summarize, is that a country where from the citizens to the corporates to the leaders are being truly conscious and looking at areas where we can be truly uh, sustainable and eco-conscious plus uh, with, a, with a huge emphasis on restor restoring and having probably, like I said, 40% of a uh, forest cover in the country by 2040, 2030. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela. That's, a, that's the place to be, and we hope to get there somehow. Uh, it's been delightful uh, talking to each and every one of you, and thank you very much, Jayant Vijay Singh, Earth Watch WWF Climate Champion and co-founder at Rainforest Protection of Sri Lanka. Thank you, Jayant. Uh, thank you very much, Rohan Kure, Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management Specialist and Consultant to ADB. Uh, Shani is Vijay Singha, Vice President of Quality Assurance, Health and Safety, Sustainability and Data Privacy at Cinnamon Holders and Resorts. Thank you. And Palinda, thank you very much for being here. Specialist Corporate Responsibility attached to Rockland Distilleries. It's been lovely having you all. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us. Until next time, take care.